G'day. Welcome to Partakers Think Spot on Monday the 23rd of January 2012. Let's go to Jim and Joy and discover what they are sharing with us today to help you into a new week. Over to you, Jim. Whether you have read about Job in the Bible or not, I am sure you must have heard some mention of his name in association with his sufferings. Or or maybe you've heard the term Job's comforters. Well, those who (laughs) were supposed to be comforters to him were really adding to his discomfort because they were just judging him all the time and saying, well, you must have done something wrong to land up like this. You see, Job suffered immensely, losing his family, his wealth and health, but never lost his integrity with what he was going through. Neither did he curse God for what he was put through. He could even have lost his sanity, as these so-called comforters were no warm-hearted friends to console him, They certainly were not comforters to him in his distress. Instead, they they blamed him for what he suffered. They believed he must have done something sinful, something very wrong, in order for the tragedies in his life. However, if you read the very beginning of Job, in the very first chapter, you will discover that Job is singled out by God as a truly righteous man. A man who loved and served God with all his heart. Yes, Job was mystified for a while. You can find this out in the very first 20 chapters. But then, as his three so-called comforters continually attack his righteousness, assuming he was responsible for the sufferings he was enduring, and they were saying all manner of cruel things about him, which were totally untrue, suddenly, in replying to one of these three accusers, he says, I cannot see God and all the ways he takes, but he knows the way I take. In other words, he sees me continually, said Job, and knows all about me. And then Job, having understood the intention of God in his sufferings, says, when he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold, fine gold. Job knows there is a purpose in his sufferings. Now, if gold is being separated from its impurities in a refining process, the heat has to be intense for the separation to take place and for gold to emerge as fine gold. Now, it could be that you too are going through a testing time at the moment and asking, why? 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 Now, the hospital visitors, if we can call them that, to Job, had no knowledge of the purpose of Job's suffering, and they were counselling him without wisdom. Perhaps, if grapes had been in the bowl beside him, they would have eaten them, and they would have thought they were doing Job a favour. However, how careful we need to be when helping someone who, who is going through some form of suffering that we take the time to do more listening than talking to the patient. Job was rewarded for his integrity and faithfulness, but you have to read the very last chapter to find out what happened. Compassion is something that Jesus certainly did have, and plenty of it. The lepers, the bereaved, the poor, the lame, and those unjustly treated all became his deep concern, And from morning to night, he spent hours and hours ministering to their every need. His wisdom was not always listened to, but when it was, people were greatly benefited. How you and I need to look at Jesus' life more in the Gospels and see how he talked and listened to people and responded to their cries. He never, ever passed by on the other side when he saw a need. I expect you remember the parable of the Good Samaritan. You see, when someone cried out, Jesus responded. Job knew eventually what was going on and accepted it as from God without complaint about God's dealings with him. You may have also heard of Gladys Aylward. Oh, she was an amazing lady of courage and compassion as she left the home shores of England for China with the deep (coughs) 
with a deep concern and compassion for a people she had never seen. She knew it was the will of the Lord to go and almost penniless she boarded the train at Liverpool and set off on a journey in complete faith that God would make her journey worthwhile and prosperous. Many today give thanks to the little woman, as she was known, barely five foot tall. Inside of her she had a flaming heart of passion for God and his work. Her work in leading a large number of children from an orphanage across wild country to safety in a war-stricken zone would be remembered forever. She knew what the suffering was, but she suffered for the sake of Christ as she had the very compassion of Christ within her. Have you got that? Ask God for it. Lord, we are often complaining when we have nothing like the experiences of Job or others like Gladys Aylward to compare with. Forgive us for our moaning and grumbling. Help us to see, as the scriptures say, our light afflictions are but for a moment. When we think of Jesus and his sufferings for us, we are put to shame. Thank you. We have such a wonderful God, as indeed you are to comfort us in our afflictions. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives our iniquities, heals all our sicknesses and diseases, and whose mercy reaches unto the heavens. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, save the Lord with gladness. Lord, help us to do this for your name's sake. Amen. Thanks for joining us on Partakers Think Spot. See you again real soon.